Welcome to the Boxing Gossip Channel. The day has finally come. We've been speaking about this on the channel for a very, 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 very long time. But the return of Tyson Fury has been announced. June the 9th, working with Frank Warren at the Manchester Arena. As of yet, we have no opponent announced and as of yet, we have no undercard. One would suspect there is a possibility Terry Flanagan versus Maurice Hooker for the WBO light welterweight title would be a strong possibility as a co-main event given Terry Flanagan is a Manchester fighter um, and obviously this bill is going to take place at the Manchester Arena. But putting that to one side, the big news is Tyson Fury is back. Um, the fact he has signed with Frank Warren um, is probably not a surprise. You know, Eddie Hearn uh, stated in a recent interview that it looked like uh, he and Tyson Fury would not be doing business. And I guess Frank Warren is the other established big hitter in the UK scene uh, at this point. So the fact he signed with Frank Warren is... Not a surprise. I guess sceptics could say that it potentially means a future mega bout against Anthony Joshua becomes less likely. Um, you know, when 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 you know the two fighters are represented by different promoters who seem to have deals with different broadcasters, etc. But who knows the ins and outs of the arrangement they've agreed? Perhaps there's a contract clause that says Fury is allowed to. Go and fight on Sky Box Office um, if, uh, you know, that Anthony Joshua fight is made. Obviously, Fury has substantial uh, legal representation and Fury has people looking after his best interests. So one would presume those sort of conversations have arisen during the course of negotiations for this deal. Um, during the press conference, Frank Warren was asked, what is the longevity of this deal? He didn't give a specific longevity, but he said it was a multi-fight deal. Now, a multi-fight deal could mean a lot of things. It could mean two fights. You know, it could mean a fight in June and then a fight in September. Or it could mean, you know, any number of fights, any number of longevity. Uh, but this is obviously a fight, um, a deal that includes more than one fight. Uh, what else can I tell you from the press conference? Um... One of the questions from the press was about his uh, performance-enhancing drug allegations that were against him, and Tyson Fury refused to be drawn, saying that he didn't want to be sucked into negativity. Uh, you know, clearly that is a topic that is going to be mentioned alongside Tyson Fury uh, for the rest of his career, whether he likes it or not. Um, there was a bizarre question, and there's always bizarre moments in Tyson Fury press conferences, but there was a bizarre moment when... Uh, it appeared that his dad, John Fury, asked a question from the crowd, which was about how it felt to be working with BT Sports, because John Fury had noticed that BT Sports weren't represented on the poster. And Frank Warren cut across and said, a broadcast announcement will come in due course. So that was interesting. It was a very bizarre question. Why would a father ask a son about a broadcaster at a press conference to begin with? And, you know, I would have thought that, you know, working with Frank Warren, the return of Tyson Fury would most likely be on uh, BT Sports or be on Box Nation. You know, those are the two broadcasters associated with Frank Warren. So I wonder if there's something more going on there. I wonder if there's something more which is why John Fury asked a question in the first place. I wonder if, uh, you know... Uh, if, if Frank Warren's got something up his sleeve, which is why he didn't give an announcement there and then. You know, it, it seems like not very much of an announcement if Frank announces that it's going to be with BT Sport in a week or two's time. You know, so we'll have to see what the state of play is there. Um, I wonder at all if there's any possibility um, that Tyson will be doing something on terrestrial TV because of his relationships with Mick Hennessy. Oh, I honestly don't know the answer to that. So uh be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, well, what else can I say? Um, there was numerous suggestions from Frank Warren um, that 
AJ, Deontay Wilder, those sort of characters could only call themselves world champions if they were to beat Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury was the man who beat the man. My personal take, I, I, I get this idea of the lineal heavyweight championship. I get the idea of the man beating the man. But I think if you surrender your position in the sport by being inactive in boxing for so long, I, I think that loses a lot of weight. Um, for my money, I, I do consider Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua legitimate champions. And the fact that they haven't taken on or beaten Tyson Fury doesn't really affect my opinion on that just personally. You know, it's all very well beating the man if the man is active and able to fight. And, you know, if, if someone like Anthony Joshua um, had you know, missed the opportunity to fight Tyson Fury on three or four occasions, yeah, maybe we could question his legitimacy as a champion. But the truth is that the reason those fights haven't happened is because Tyson Fury's been on the sidelines, because he's been unable to fight. And, you know, you can't just go off for years and take that position as the number one heavyweight hostage and, you know, come back years later and claim that those guys aren't legitimate champions because they haven't beaten you. You know, it doesn't work like that. You've got to have a level of activity. So I kind of, I didn't buy into that. Uh, interesting to see who the opponent is. Obviously, it's kind of relatively short notice. So I guess less than two months till fight night. Uh, I have heard rumours online, and these are just online gossip rumours. There's no, ne not necessarily any substance behind them. I have heard the name Gary Cornish linked with Fury's return fight. Um... Look, I'm not expecting a world beater opponent. I'm not expecting a top 10 opponent. Uh, you know, a guy like Gary Cornish, you'd suspect would be very, very easy work for Tyson Fury. Uh, you know, Cornish, very fragile fighter, uh, limited technically, nowhere near the attributes of a guy like Tyson Fury. You, you wonder if a guy like Gary Cornish could be a realistic option given how bad he looked against, uh, you know, Anthony Joshua. It would be very easy for people to make unfavorable comparisons between Joshua and uh, Tyson Fury if Joshua if Fury didn't look as devastating against Gary Cornish so I'm not convinced that will be the opponent but I have seen that mooted a few places online um, I guess my final comment to make is I, I've noticed a definite shift in public opinion towards Tyson Fury after the Klitschko fight it was very fashionable to be anti-Fury I remember because at the time I was very pro Tyson Fury and I remember all the comments I used to get when I talked about him fighting the other heavyweights, when I talked about his status as my number one fighter in the division. You know, he was a very controversial figure. People didn't like the style that he fought. They perceived it to be negative. They perceived it to be boring. Um, people didn't like some of the remarks that he'd made in the press. And at the time, Anthony Joshua was very much the golden boy of British boxing. Um, but the you know the cycle seems to turn, and you know the Brits do love to back an underdog, and the Brits do love to turn against uh, the established number one. And maybe we're starting to see that happening. You know, Tyson Fury certainly in terms of his popularity is enjoying a bit of a resurgence. I posted a video earlier this week, which was a Patreon request um, to discuss a peak uh, an early career Lennox Lewis versus Tyson Fury, and. In that video, I, I speculated that Tyson Fury could give an early career Lennox Lewis a huge amount of problems. And I suspected to get 100 comments calling me an idiot for even daring to pose that question. Uh, but on the contrary, most of the comments were agreeing with me and saying, you know, Tyson Fury uh, would be a very formidable man to beat at his best. So, you know, just from my small sample size and my small YouTube channel, I've noticed a, a definite trend towards Tyson Fury and the people being excited about his return and the people starting to say that his style would be too much for guys like Joshua and Wilder. I don't know if it's just the people's tendency to always bet against the guy who's on top. Maybe it's some of the scandal that surrounded Joshua's career recently. You know, um, the suggestion of... Um, uh, favourable refereeing in his last two fights. Some of the, uh, you know, some of the stuff that's gone on outside of the ring with Anthony Joshua on his social media, for example. Uh, I, I wonder if these are contributing factors in why there seems to be a slight turn of the tide in public opinion as to who the fan favourite is between Tyson and Anthony Joshua. Um, but whatever you your opinion is, I'm sure we'll all agree that having Tyson back in the heavyweight division adds a lot of character, adds a lot of value, and there's going to be entertainment both inside the ring and outside of the ring. There's still a million questions to be answered. I still have 
a lot of scepticism that he will be the same man that he was um, against Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, you know, he hasn't been in the best of health physically and mentally outside of the ring. And, um, you know, you could say that some of the stuff that his body has had to endure in terms of weight gain and in terms of extravagance uh, could come back to haunt him. You know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But there's still a lot of questions to be answered. But it's great news. We look forward to June the 9th. I will, of course, cover it extensively uh, when a comeback opponent is announced. Very, very much uh, look forward to hearing who that is. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll break it down in, in full when that opponent is announced. Let me know your thoughts on this news, guys. Are you pleased to see the return of uh, Tyson Fury? What type of comeback opponent are you expecting? What type of comeback opponent would you like to see? Uh, leave your comments in the section below if you've enjoyed the video. Please take the time to press the thumbs up. Please take the time to hit subscribe. As always, many thanks for